Paxson, I think we're, we're good. So uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you again for attending these uh, rounds. Uh, just a little uh, shopkeeping. Uh, next month, uh, these rounds will be on the third Thursday to coincide with the Rock Robertson uh, visiting professor in trauma, and he'll be giving a, a talk on the lessons learned uh, during the Boston Marathon uh, terrorist attack. Uh, but today, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Faxim Mawali, who's a tenured professor of surgery and who's been um, really a, a, the backbone, if you will, of experimental surgery research. He is uh, an outstanding international uh, researcher with uh, multiple CIHR grants. In addition to being an outstanding researcher, he's also quite an innovator and even an entrepreneur and has a, a few of his own companies started uh, based on some of the research that he's, um, he's been doing over the years. He's also been really a, an important component of the uh, master's and PhD program with uh, supervising a number of, uh, of residents and uh, non-resident thesis uh, over the years. Um, he's also recently been uh, named the graduate program director for experimental surgery. And as you know, we've expanded uh, quite a bit the offerings in experimental surgery, not only under basic research, but into education, innovation, uh, outcomes, and I'm sure other important uh, areas as well. So Faxon, it's a pleasure to welcome you to these rounds and uh, we're, we're looking forward to uh, some great discussion afterwards. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, uh, Kevin, and thank you very much for inviting me. I would like to thank everyone for uh, showing up uh, so early. Um, so uh, I would uh, like to start uh, with our team. Um, so our team is led by Dr. Leon Feldman, uh, Dr. Jack Barlett, uh, and myself. Uh, newly minted graduate program director. And we've got a wonderful cast uh, with uh, the administration. Uh, Frankie was a program manager. And we've got Misha who just joined us and Sharon who's been there for a long, long time. So uh, we work together uh, as a team. Now I want uh, to start with a little bit of history um, experimental surgery is one of uh, McGill's and indeed Canada's uh, longest running graduate program. Uh, if you think back, uh, the first thesis was by Dr. Gerard Evans, um, and it was entitled The Glycogen Content of the Rat Heart. I, I looked it up and I found that there was actually a publication in Journal of Physiology uh, in, in, in 1934. So, uh, and that was, uh, the thesis was completed about eight, eight years ago. And since then, there has been over 650 uh, theses uh, from our department. And this has been uh, produced by our uh, excellent uh, research uh, uh, supervisors and excellent uh, uh, professors. So uh, we've done well uh, for a long time. And now to quote, uh, Mike Tyson, everyone has a plan until they are punched in the face. So this is exactly uh, what happened in 2014. So the department uh, became aware that the number of residents entering the program would be slashed due to a new provincial government policy such that uh, some divisions would be forced to take only one resident on alternate years. Now as residents, uh, they made up about one third of the graduate program. It became apparent that in order to survive, uh, changes would be required to the program uh, offerings and also to the recruitment pool. So, so, uh, so, so, so following the very positive, so there was <coughs> uh, a, a presentation that was given on the Fraser Guard by a visiting professor, uh, Tom Krumel, 
it became apparent that there was strong interest in surgical innovation, uh, as you can see here. And so a new concentration of experimental surgery uh, master's program was born. And this was led by uh, Dr. Barlett and Dr. LaChapelle uh, in, in, in 2015. So uh, with new graduate courses in surgical innovation. And so this has been focusing first on needs finding and needs statement development, and secondly, on prototype development and business plan uh, development. So I joined in 2018, and I remember at the time we had about 45 students uh, from uh, surgery, uh, computer science, engineering, and business students. So these were uh, from uh, three universities, uh, McGill, uh, Code Technology Superior, and Concordia University. Now, this concentration in surgical innovation uh, was uh, immediately uh, quickly followed by global surgery uh, here. And global surgery was led by Dr. Razik and Dr. Dekebal. And then uh, again, uh, which was a wonderful response, uh, this was followed by surgical education here. And surgical ed education uh, was led by uh, Dr. Dr. Uh, Kevin LaChapelle. Now, just uh, uh, going back to the surgical innovation program, which has been really successful, uh, we now capitalize on about six years experience. And, and, and this has partnered with a new kid on the block, uh, which just started this year, uh, new health, uh, uh, digital health innovation. And, and also partnered with uh, epidemiology. And so, so uh, perhaps one of the most striking illustration of this leadership, uh, leadership which is led by uh, Dr. Jack Barlett, uh, Dr. Kevin LaChapelle, was that uh, from uh, six student uh, teams, four have started companies and have started developing their products. So this is really, uh, an incredible achievement in such a short time indeed. Uh, so we believe that the, the department uh, will, will, be, will lead uh, the university and indeed Montreal in a med tech innovation training over the years. So, uh, so this is really wonderful achievement and it's a pleasure uh, to be involved in, in, in such a course. Now in 2017, uh, the master's science, masters of science had a different flavor. Uh, we also had the uh, non-thesis uh, masters. And so this was, lo was launched by Dr. Hagland and Dr. Barlett. And it offers graduate level training in core fundamentals of modern surgical uh, research. And this is very flexible. And it provides the students uh, the opportunity to gain ground, grounding in course disciplines while allowing training opportunities in more specific areas, uh, such as the ones that I mentioned in global surgery, innovation, education, and uh, it depends on the interest of the, of the student. And it has got short projects, which are performed uh, in collaborative spirit with the basic and clinician scientists working together using interdisciplinary approaches. So this has been uh, quite a very uh, uh, wonderful addition, and we are very grateful for this uh, foresight. So, as I was saying, these are the concentration directors uh, in surgical innovation uh, and digital health, uh, Dr. Barlett, uh, Dr. Kevin LaChapelle, uh, Kevin uh, in surgical education, together with Dr. Jason Halley, and we have got here, yeah, Dr. Dan Dekerban and uh, Dr. Razik in global surgery. So I've been involved in non-thesis as well as uh, in uh, surgical innovation uh, with uh, Dr. Barlett. So uh, now, as I was saying uh, before, so so uh, if you imagine in in 2014, we used to have about 40% of our master students were surgical residents. And now uh, this has dropped to about 18% uh, in 
2019, 2020, it has really dropped. And another phenomenon that has happened is that for the first time in 20 years, we have zero new residents undertaking a PhD. So uh, this is a priority for us uh, to see how we can be able to reverse this, uh, this um, uh, negative uh, trend uh, because we are committed to training uh, the surgical residents uh, here at McGill. Now, that was uh, uh, a, a bit of history. And so uh, I joined uh, seven, a little bit more than seven months now. And I think uh, uh, the question is, what have you done for us lately? So the first thing that we did was uh, we looked uh, to, to our website because this is our window to the world. And so we did a lot of improvements on our website and we're still continuing uh, doing improvements. Uh, just to mention a few things, uh, we have direct access to important landing pages from, uh, from the home tab options. We have created uh, uh, on funding, um, uh, on funding, we have created a, a page on early career investigator. I'm gonna to come to this uh, shortly. We have created uh, uh, the, the improved our, our, free, our uh, frequent FAQ page because when, when I joined, we, we realized that we had a lot of questions that were the same being asked by hundreds of students, the same, same questions over and over. So we developed this uh, FAQ page, which is quite very helpful. Um, we, we, we also created the SEM page and also linked it to the COVID-19 page uh, with the GBSSS. So the other thing we are working on on faculty, if you check on faculty, you see a lot of big changes that we have done in faculty. So we want to be more detailed about the faculty uh, so that we can easily be reached. So this is ongoing. And now I talked about the non-thesis projects. Uh, so one of the things that we noticed in the non-thesis project is uh, to try to resolve one of the problems that they, because uh, they, the students, when they come uh, in the non-thesis, they are looking for projects. And so we wanted to create a database whereof we could have projects there and uh, the students can go to the, uh, to look for projects, they can go through the projects and see which ones they are interested in. And so that we can match them and uh, the interview by the uh, potential uh, supervisors and and so so wanted to make it easy to streamline it but that doesn't uh, replace the old tradition of going to a supervisor and asking for the project so this has worked well especially uh, in covid times and uh, we have for the supervisors here and we have got once the project is is no longer available we we can show here that it's no longer available so we have had uh, more than uh, 26 projects uh, to select from. And please, if you have got uh, projects, uh, send them to us uh, at any time and we can include them in the database. So this is not a public database. So don't be worried that the, uh, there are uh, some private information, some wonderful work will be taken by others. So this is, uh, we keep it private and only the students can be able to access uh, the, this database. So this is one initiative that we started. And the other thing initiative that we did was that uh, to be able to track the non-thesis because uh, we have a lot of non-thesis students. And the question is uh, trying to uh, be able to track the, the, the uh, progress of the students. So, we, we, we uh, developed these uh, tracking online forms and these two are developed in, in, uh, uh, with work uh, with uh, supervisors uh, who are uh, very helpful. Jason Haley was very helpful uh, in, in helping us uh, uh, feedback uh, with uh, 
so that we can hear what the, the supervisors think about what we need to be including. Uh, so we've got that in the fall as well as in the winter. Uh, we wanted to make them quite very easy. These are quite straightforward and user friendly. And of course, uh, we, this is the first time that we have used that and we're welcome to uh, suggestions how to improve them uh, going forward. Uh, it gives, for example, if you have a due date here and, and you don't need to email or any correspondence that is necessary. So the, formals, the, the forms are, can be submitted directly to the administration and uh, Misha takes care of this. And, and so we want to, this to work quite seamlessly. Now, the other thing that we have uh, implemented is that uh, we have, we're trying to help the students in terms of finding a supervisor. We have some excellent students with a high GPA and, and with really wonderful records and who are looking for a supervisor. And so uh, this is an addition to the traditional way of contacting the supervisor directly. So they can fill in a form and we can do, uh, try to do some matchmaking. So we've been uh, trying to do a lot of matchmaking uh, uh, to make it easier. So this has uh, proved quite well in terms of uh, as a supervisor can just uh, come up with funds and uh, looking for a student. So this is uh, working quite very well. So this is new. The other uh, new, I talked about digital health, uh, uh, innovation. So this is a new course that was introduced and it's just uh, come uh, online. And this is a branch out of Dr. Jack Farley. Now, uh, so what is expected uh, this year? So we expect uh, digital health innovation as a non-thesis master's because what's available is a thesis master's degree and also as a certificate and we hope it will also come as a as a diploma so this is what is expected the other thing that is expected uh, uh, is a surgical outcomes uh, master's degree uh, this year now uh, so this is a uh, so this is a, 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 a medical technology internship so this is an internship that started uh, last year. So one of the things that uh, that is a, a current uh, uh, problem is that um, there is a disconnect between what the, when the students graduate uh, with a lot of theory and what uh, in what businesses are looking for, what pharmaceutical companies are looking for, what industry is looking for, and so there's quite a disconnect. The other thing is that uh, there is uh, something that has come into form, which is called academic inflation, where we have got uh, a lot of students who graduate and they find themselves back in their parents' basements. Uh, so uh, one of the ways is to try to develop these internships where the students uh, can go and spend some time uh, in the industry, in pharmaceutical companies, uh, so we have this course, which has uh, quite a hit, uh, 501, which, where the students start with an orientation session and conclude with deep brief sessions. And then they spend about six weeks of internship uh, in, in, uh, in industry or pharmaceutical companies. And so we have had, and then they can also uh, change hosts in 502 and they can become even more focused depending on their interest and depending on the feedback that we can get from industry, which is uh, they can focus on communication or management. So we have got uh, this uh, uh, border uh, with uh, an industry and partnering with uh, other uh, pharmaceutical companies. So we have had a lot of suggestions and a lot of interest uh, to expand this so that it's not just in the summer. And so that's something that we're working on. Now, the other thing that we've uh, done uh, 
is um, the in, in of uh, is a seminar series, which is held every Tuesday at 1 p.m. And we have got some fantastic uh, speakers. Uh, we have got uh, Dr. Dr. Robin Poole, uh, who is a member of the Order of Canada, who gave a wonderful talk on advice to young scientists. We have one of our own, uh, Dr. Aoud, uh, and we have got uh, Dr. Evans, who spoke just this week. A really wonderful uh, presentation. So these are just some of the uh, some of the speakers, and we urge. Um, everyone uh, who is interested, if you have got a speaker, uh, please uh, send us uh, the name and uh, please invite this, uh, the speaker. And we have got uh, uh, funds that are related to, uh, to, the, uh, to the speaking. And so basically the format is that we have one internal or external main speaker. Uh, we have got two students, speakers, uh, they give a talk about 10 minutes. And we have got some goodies here at the end of the seminar, we'll be giving student presentation prizes and even some outstanding questions award. So uh, we, we, we please send your uh, student uh, speakers um, at, and uh, next week we're looking for two uh, students uh, to give a talk. So this is uh, quite very really, uh, important and interesting. Now, <laughs> so as you can see, we've been very busy. And so the other thing that we have uh, been, uh, we have always started, and this was launched in January 2021 uh, with uh, Dr. Leon Feldman, uh, Dr. Jack Barrett, and myself. This is an early career investigator mentorship. And so basically, uh, we believe that um, uh, helping uh, early investigators, mentoring them through um, through uh, how to write grants. And so this is basically based on the uh, NIH uh, uh, career investigator mentorship uh, program that I belong to, and I've been to for almost 10 years now, uh, where they have been able to raise, we have been able to help a young investigator and raise almost uh, uh, half a billion dollars in grant money. And so the success rate has been quite very high, uh, almost 60% uh, success rate. So which is really uh, wonderful. So we believe that uh, helping uh, investigators so that we, they don't uh, have the same uh, mistakes that we were making. And I remember when we started writing grants uh, with uh, uh, my partner in crime, Dr. John Antonio, I uh, remember that uh, we had to start from scratch. And it was really surprising that the we had one of our first grants um, uh, the first time that we applied. But the subsequent grants, like uh, tissue engineering grants, uh, we had to learn how to put together a grant. So, uh, so this is uh, uh, something that uh, I think will be helpful. And we have got nine uh, early investigators that involved. So this is done on uh, Saturday. So finally, this is an, uh, an initiative that uh, we we are trying to to, uh, to oh. do some outreach, some community outreach. Experimental surgery is committed to a living and learning environment that is equitable, diverse, and inclusive. So part of our mission is to try uh, to strive to advance equitable practices that support an inclusive research community, in which all investigators and trainees can reach their full potential. So our principles of equity, diversity in all forms, uh, 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 inclusion aligns with McGill's policies. And so, so uh, this is Disha from, for, uh, from the, the North uh, who has been teaching us and we have been listening about some ways that we can connect with the community and how we can uh, improve our uh, department as an environment that is equitable to all. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Faxin, uh, for that uh, grand tour de table and uh, a lot of uh, new and uh, interesting programs. And um, I guess 
one of the questions I, I would have because it's so diverse now is um, how do how do people in the department get involved? Um, is one of the one of the things that we've noticed is that there's a lot of uh, a lot more students and a lot more diversity, and um, sometimes uh, I guess it's hard to get uh, appropriate supervisors and appropriate supervision. So, Faxon, um, how how would you how would you look at that? How in getting people involved in the department and um, in, into experimental surgery? Yeah, so that's a oh, that's a wonderful question. Uh, so. Uh, one of the things that we are looking for is um, uh, to have a conversation and uh, with uh, different uh, faculty and and so that they can get involved. So one of the things is uh, or, uh, for for us to know what uh, the different faculty are doing and to get a conversation in terms of uh, uh, what sort of projects they are interested in, um, what sort of what students so so. So there's, the seminar does help so that we can be able to know what their students are doing and what they are interested uh, in, what sort of students they are interested in uh, in the faculty, what sort of initiatives that they are interested um, that we can uh, all work together and, and try to find some sort of uh, uh, common solution. Yes, there's a lot of uh, diversity, which is a really wonderful thing uh, that we have. and. Um, and, uh, and, and one of the things that would be is uh, to have all this um, uh, crosstalk between the different concentrations. And, and uh, sometimes we would have students who are uh, interested in global surgery, for example, and uh, uh, how they, we, they can be able to, uh, to connect to other uh, departments so that we have um, a very, uh, um, healthful, healthy dialogue um, across all the different uh, uh, sectors of experimental surgery. Okay, we have uh, a question from the chat or a comment on a question from Sofia Valencia, who's uh, did uh, her was doing her PhD, or finishing off her PhD in surgical education. Uh, the new course with the six-week internship sounds exciting. Have you considered that international students need extra permits to do an internship, even in the summer, unless it is less than 20 hours per week? Yes, that's a, that's a wonderful uh, question. We have actually been asked a lot about the, in, uh, the uh, international students um, uh, getting involved in, the, uh, in this uh, uh, internship. So. Uh, we are working together with Madil and together with the, with, uh, uh, the different companies uh, so that we can have, so we, we have uh, some uh, students uh, who are coming in uh, from India, for example, so that uh, we can uh, help in terms of, of, of working, of, of work payments uh, so that they can get into internship. So one of the questions that uh, uh, has been coming up is, of course, that are we going to get some funds from the, from the, um, are we going to be paid from, uh, from the companies? So the companies so far have been quite generous, and we already have they already hired one of the students uh, is already hired by by one of the startup, uh, one of the companies in, in, in Lavar. Um, so, so it's something that we are, we are working in, in terms of uh, having those uh, work permits with uh, international students. We have another question from Dr. Regina. What tuition does McGill now charge for resident students in the master's or PhD programs? I'm assuming the question is about non non-Quebec, non-Canadians, but maybe you could go over the, how the, the tuition breaks down. Yeah, so, so the, the, we have got, um, uh, so the, 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 the tuition, of course, it uh, goes for the international students. Uh, there's a, a different uh, category of tuition, and, but we also have help uh, from, uh, from McGill, what helps international students and and uh, not only from McGill, we also have got the help that uh, 
uh, from uh, we have some Jeff funds that we help uh, some uh, from students. Um, so so we have got some. Of course, we have got a, a higher breakdown. The students. Of, uh, uh, then that is followed, of course, from uh, students who are out of province, um, who uh, also uh, get a little bit of a higher, um, and then followed, of course, by the local students. So what we have done is uh, is is um, uh, depending on a case by case basis, uh, and also the funds that have been available from McGill, from uh, and in helping the funds. So the international students can also can, can write to us, can write to, 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 to Mateo in order to bring, to bring out the funds. So we've got a lot of uh, different um, uh, uh, issues that we've been following and helping. We are realized that the, the tuition is quite high for the international students. And, and, uh, and, and so, um, so, so there has been a lot of uh, 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 help that we are installing uh, at the moment. Um, okay, um, I guess one of the questions is uh, how does that link with the surgical scientist program? I don't know uh, because uh, I know that, um, I mean, certainly for residents, Canadian residents that want to pursue masters and PhDs that there's always a, uh, a good amount of, of uh, extra support there that sometimes is not completely used uh, from my understanding. So um, Lucy Gilbert has a comment and a question. I think Lucy, you want to perhaps just uh, ask it. Uh, I'll give you the floor to ask your question. Okay, my internet connection is rather unstable. I, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is uh, the comment is I uh, I agree with Dr. Fraxen Moa, I hope I'm pronouncing your name properly Moa, <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> that this is a gem of a program. I've had three students uh, have a master's, starting with when Rosenberg was uh, the uh, the director, and then Annie, and then now with uh, Dr. Fraxen, I have a, 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 one of our Gaini Ong fellows doing a PhD. So the comment I'd like to make is, Gaini Ong, we come under you because we are now uh, under maternal health and there's nothing that Gaini Ong has uh, in common with uh, neonatology. But I noticed that in your, um, you said that you had no PhD students in 2020 and you do have a PhD student. So we feel like the poor relatives. And I wonder if you could comment on that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, Gaini Ong takes this program very, very seriously. I think it's an excellent program. We, uh, our students do very good thesis from this and the support that we have had both from the director as well as from Sharon Turner is incredible. I would just like us to be taken on in equal footing to this, uh, the, uh, what we call the general sur surgical services. Yeah, that's, that's a really wonderful point. And I agree with you uh, with the, the, all your points that you raised. And, so that was uh, up to 2019. So that the report was up to 2019. <laughs> Forgiven. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. So we are we are we are glad. Uh, so I was trying to go through the history there and see how that uh, has dropped. So so we are we are happy that that's starting to pick up. Uh, but but uh, it's uh, it's it needs to pick up more than it's uh, ever so as opposed to having, you know, two students here, three students here. Um, so we are very happy and we are glad. And yes, it, it, I totally agree with you in terms of uh, uh, in having to be on equal footing. And please let us know uh, what we can do uh, to improve that. Uh, so uh, please feel free to, to reach with us. We are basically reachable um, in terms of any suggestions that you'd have. Um, in improving that. 
Okay. I think it's excellent. I, it, during the COVID times, compared to every other depart, academic departments and the admin supports, yeah. uh, including our own, I believe that your uh, division had the best, best support. Every question, every query was dealt with beautifully and within a very short period. And I commend you for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, really much, uh, much appreciated. So uh, we, uh, so we have had this uh, wonderful feedback uh, from a lot um, uh, with our administrators. Uh, Sharon has been really great, and we've got Frankie as Misha, and so uh, really thankful. And this is a, a, a time where we, we, uh, uh, it is a family. Uh, really a, a big family and we are going through uh, this together like we say here uh, <laughs> thanks and uh, great thank you very much uh, Lucy uh, I have a comment from Dr. Harley who also comments on how great you're doing Faxon and your team uh, but uh, perhaps you could expand a bit more on the non-thesis program for those faculty who might be interested specifically, I suppose, in supervising a student in terms of expectation and how it differs from the thesis programs. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Kevin. That's a wonderful question. Uh, so I can't take credit for that one though. That's Jason's question. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. <laughs> uh, so actually, uh, Jason has been uh, really wonderful, available for us when we're doing the tracking for the non-thesis. Uh, and uh, most of what we have there were heavy suggestions uh, from, from uh, Jason. So uh, feedback uh, back and forth. So one of the th uh, things with the non-thesis, I think at first uh, people are a, a, a bit wary that there is, uh, uh, stipends involved, there's uh, uh, payments involved. Uh, this is uh, what you're getting are uh, basically free students. And the, the, the project, uh, and they have been quite very successful in terms of the projects, as you've seen some of the non theses have uh, presented. In fact, uh, Jason's uh, student presented, uh, Uz Disha, uh, presented uh, wonderfully um, uh, this week. And so the expectations is that uh, and uh, now in COVID times, of course, if it's a wet lab, uh, it, uh, you know, it's uh, something that has to be negotiated uh, in terms of uh, going to the lab. Uh, so I have four non thesis students and uh, some of them, are the, you, have, you have got, uh, I've been doing reviews, review papers, which is really wonderful. Um, uh, some of them have been working on all that data that has heaped that we needed somebody to, to, to work on it and learn. Uh, so, so it's really wonderful. So the expectations are that uh, one, you've got a, a student who of course you are matched and, uh, and you'll be able to go through, uh, it could be one semester, it could be two semesters, working on a mutually agreeable uh, project and uh, uh, so I have three of my students are actually going to publish uh, papers uh, in two semesters. Uh, so it's, they, uh, they uh, can be as, uh, as, uh, um, as uh, uh, competitive as the, the, as the thesis students. Uh, but the, of course it's a, it's a short time and we have uh, projects uh, it is helpful to have projects that are win-win uh, projects. That is quite very helpful. And there are a lot of projects that are win-win uh, uh, projects. And so it's really a great excitement uh, to have these students who are, are interested in being able to, uh, to uh, put it uh, one toe into uh, writing something and being involved. In, in, uh, in, in either uh, research or being involved in certain projects uh, that would be uh, quite very helpful, mutually helpful. Yeah. 
Okay, Faxon, thank you. Uh, we have another uh, question from the chat. Uh, you mentioned industry uh, hiring MSc graduates. Does your website have a list of industry partners and their particular interests for research collaboration? <clears throat> yeah, so uh, so the, we haven't included the the uh, industry uh, they are, they are, uh, on the website. I think it's something that we are going to include. Uh, we have got uh, companies uh, that we, we've been, uh, have been quite very really good, wonderful companies uh, with us. And there are a lot of companies that are actually interested in taking in uh, students. And we are going to include those on the, on the website. And um, so we've also, uh, uh, before COVID, <coughs> we had opportunities to have for companies outside uh, Quebec now at the moment we are limited to companies uh, in Quebec so I uh, would, would like to there we are also trying to we are, uh, to um, we have had a discussion with uh, um, MITAS uh, so that they can be able to uh, pay uh, part of the, the stipend to the students so a lot of things are in discussion uh, at the moment, we are limited to companies who are, are willing uh, to take in students during uh, while they are observing these COVID uh, times. So I forgot the other part of the question, Kevin. <laughs> uh, well, no, the, I, I suppose it was what were, what were the links uh, between industry partners uh, for research collaboration? <clears throat> And I, I, I assume also job opportunities, but uh, particularly for research collaboration between industry partners. Yes, so the research we have now, we have um, uh, companies like Baumomentum, which are starting uh, uh, different areas of uh, research and they are involved students to work uh, in their labs uh, and uh, to collaborate. We have uh, had collaboration with um, uh, Oligomedic, for example, and Oligomedic have got a product that the um, uh, and products that they are in uh, uh, undergoing um, uh, FDA review, and so it's it's nice that they involve they have involved uh, one of our students there so that they can see what is involved uh, in responding to the FDA and what is involved. Uh, in uh, having that interaction with the FDA. <clears throat> so there's a research collaboration. Um, we have had the CHRP grants with, uh, with them. So you can have those kind of collaborations uh, because it's not just the student who goes there. Uh, you can have a uh, talk with the companies so that there is uh, scientific, because a lot of them are interested in, in having those type of uh, of collaboration. Um, of course, we collaborate with the uh, Admar, uh, which is a, a big company that, that helps um, uh, uh, startup companies and also uh, in research. So there are a whole host of a lot of companies. And I think this is going to grow quite very big. Uh, uh, so we have had uh, some interest in collaborating with US companies. And, and students who are interested in that um, uh, in that uh, collaboration. So, uh, yeah. So, 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 so that's where we are. <clears throat> okay. Thanks very much, uh, Faxon, for that. And um, I'm just uh, looking at the time. Um, it's about eight fifteen, a nearly eight twenty. I'm wondering if Dr. Fellman uh, would like to perhaps add a few uh, comments. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Kevin. Um, I just want to really congratulate uh, Professor Mawali for his leadership here. Um, that uh, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the talk this morning demonstrates um, the way um, the, the program is meeting the needs of many different types of learners, um, including, of course, our traditional um, residents and surgical trainees and, 
And it's really the backbone of, of our academic department. And it's a, it's a jewel. It's a jewel in, uh, in the Department of Surgery. And, and I think that may, maybe people don't know that it's the fastest growing um, uh, program in the faculty of, uh, of health sciences now. Um, and I think that's a tribute to um, the foresight of the last, you mentioned last decade or so uh, when um, people had uh, like uh, with, with Dr. Barilet, Dr. Freed, um, the foresight to look at what was coming down the road and to develop programs that people want uh, and that people need and the kind of relationships and collaborations that people are looking for. <clears throat> and the ability to create new programs such as you mentioned like digital health innovation in collaboration with, uh, the, de with the, the Department of Medicine, Experimental Medicine. Um, to create, and we know that this is going to meet a need and an interest that, that many of uh, many people will have. Um, the opportunity, um, the growth of the program is what allows it to have the programmatic support and the ability to have the level of superior, um, uh, you know, PIs and supervisors um, and to support them in a way that allows our students to thrive and the research in our department to thrive. Um, and I think that that's a trip that's really a tribute to uh, building a program of this of a uh, number of students and uh, taking care of them. Um, I think the also uh, as part of uh, meeting the needs of our learners is is creating new programs, like you mentioned, um, the surgical outcomes concentration or stream, which is being developed by um, uh, Professor Fiore which I think we um, want to meet the needs of many of our trainees who are looking for clinical research training and have needed to go elsewhere to get that, uh, other departments. Uh, so hopefully we will be able to meet the needs of those, of those trainees as well within the Department of Surgery. Um, and creating the kinds of collaborations that Dr. Gilbert mentioned um, with other departments um, who, um, uh, want to hopefully take advantage of these innovative programs that that are that 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 have been created through uh, the foresight of the people who've been involved, like Dr. Phillips, you mentioned as the uh, previous um, uh, program director as well. Um, and as Dr. Nuitra says, I think the mentorship program to me was a very is a big priority, uh, mentoring our early career faculty. Um, to really, as you mentioned, uh, Professor Mawali, the idea of, 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 of being your best self and, and using all the, the skills that, that, that you've acquired over your training and then um, sometimes um, uh, putting these grants together, um, especially for some of our clinician scientists, uh, the kind of support that, that this program is providing, I think is, is something that's gonna serve us extremely well over the years. And, even though it's the first uh, year that we're offering it. And I will say you, you guys put this together so quickly and uh, so professionally. Um, and the fact that we have, uh, I think uh, close to a dozen people enrolled in it, participating in it, um, I think will help, will, help, will help our early career investigators who, who you know, have, have dedicated so much time and effort into um, uh, getting their academic careers off, off the ground and it's our responsibility to help them put their best foot forward, I believe. Um, so I, I really appreciate how uh, you and, uh, and Dr. Barilet have, 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 have gotten a, a really amazing program off the ground that is, that is really greatly appreciated. So thank you for the opportunity to speak for a few minutes and just to uh, thank you and your team for um, these really important contributions uh, to the Department of Surgery. Thank you very much, Dr. Feldman, for your support. And uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Rachapel, for your invitation. And thank you for listening to me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, everyone, for attending. Again, uh, great attendance at rounds. I think we were over the 80 mark. So that, that, that's great. And we'll keep it up. Again, uh, next month's uh, round rounds uh, coincides with the Rock Robertson Visiting Professor in Trauma Surgery. So. I hope to see everybody there as well. Again, thank you, Faxon, for your what you're doing, and Jake as well, and and everybody that works in experimental surgery, and Jason, uh, 
who's also, I'm sure, uh, uh, lighting new fires everywhere he goes. So um, that's great. Thank you, everyone. Have a have a have a good OR. Thank you.